This time I'd like to call to order the uh, Thursday, August 24th meeting of the Board of Adjustment. Roll call. Ford. Here. Darkens Johnson. Here. Hansen. Here. Stonebarger. Here. Stein. Here. Kays. Here. Olson, Dolly, and Culhane are absent, but we have a quorum. Okay, first item on the uh, agenda is approval of the July 20th and the August 10th minutes. Do we have a motion? Sure. Mr. Stein and Mr. Uh, Hansen seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Number two, applicant Mike Muski. Okay. Application was submitted requesting to construct a non-conforming 744 square foot garage addition onto a single family dwelling located on a substandard R1 zone parcel. Said structure is proposed to be constructed as close as 5 foot 2 inches from the side north property line where a minimum 9 foot setback is required. Application was denied based on the following ordinance regulations. Section 21.0302 prohibits the design and creation of non-conforming structures. 21.1001 are height and placement regulations. 21.6001, all required yards or setbacks shall be open to unoccupied space extending from the natural ground level to the sky with no obstructions. And 21.6002, no adjacent open space shall be used to satisfy any yard or setback required for any other structure and no yard setback shall be reduced in dimension below the minimum requirements set for the district in which such yard is located. The applicant appeals the above requirements of the, zo the current zoning ordinance. Staff finds that currently there exists a compliant 2,184 square foot house, one compliant 96 square foot shed, a fence, and two open off street parking spaces on this substandard R1 zoned corner parcel. There is sufficient buildable area to construct a completely compliant garage up to 820 square feet without variances, adding one to two enclosed parking spaces to the two open off street parking spaces that already exist. If application is endorsed, this board may consider requiring fulfillment of any or all lacking boulevard infrastructure requirements in conjunction with any structural improvements authorized by building permit. Okay, with that, I'll open the public meeting. Is anybody here to speak for or against? Come on up and state your name. And oh, Brandon Johnson. <clears throat> Basically, I guess so I'm here. I'm Mitch's neighbor just to the north and he asked if I could be here in support of it um, for him building a garage with <clears throat> one of the stipulations was the, pr uh, the property line didn't meet the requirement for feet, um, which I told him, you know, I make an exception to that. If it was passed, I would not care if it's too close to the property line within the nine feet. Joe, did anybody come back with the letters you sent out? No. No responses. Okay. Jill, do you know, happen to know the distance of uh, the neighbor's property to the north to the property line, what the distance would be? 13.2. Yes. Uh, show us right here. It's 13 foot 2 inches to the adjacent home from the property line. So if the variance was granted, he would be over 18 feet from that residence? Correct. Other question, has the Board of Adjustment previously issued uh, variances of this nature on lots of similar dimensions? I would say they have. Third question, what is the zoning across the street from this property? To the south. R2A. What is the setback requirement in the R2A district? For so side yards. The side yards uh, would be a maximum of six feet 
or excuse me, a minimum of six feet up to nine feet, depending on the dimensions of the width of the yard. So it would it still would meet the R two A requirement then? Correct. Well, in, spe in reference to the property to the north with the eighteen feet, is that what we decided? Uh, that's your property, right? That Correct. Okay. So if this was a lot less than 75 feet, we could vary it a little bit down to a minimum of six foot, correct? A 75 foot lot would have a, a 7 .5. nine foot setback. Um, so. And then as the lot grows smaller or less in width, it goes down 10 to 10% 10 10 10 of the lot width, but only down to six foot. Right, so the minimum we would grant would be six, six if it was a substandard lot. Yes. And his only stated reason is he wants to build big enough to get two cars in comfortably? That's correct. Question, so it's gonna be a combined driveway? I'm not sure if it's going to be a combined driveway or not. Um, the way it looked on what he was saying, there would still be yard in between, I believe. I don't believe it's going to be combined. Ray, can you put my screen up? The reason I ask is um, 903. So they're building a garage back here, right? Adding on. And your apron actually out by the street encroaches out in front of his yep. property. So if he's putting a driveway in there, presumably he's going to be touching or occupying. Yeah, it would, it would part probably of be pretty close to right on the boulevard area. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, and that's where I meant out by the street. Yep. They they would become one, right? I guess I'd like to see it stay at least a six foot since that's what we've got across the way. I don't know why we're be some conformity to it then at least. This would require a seven and a half foot. Or what did you say on a 75 foot in the R2A? What is the minimum set back? Nine. It is nine. But it really doesn't need even the seven and a half foot because we're talking to the 96 foot side so yeah. but if if we did the minimum that we would have done would have been six foot setback anybody else here to speak for or against I'll close the public hearing and ask for motion for discussion purposes so moved. Mrs. Johnson makes second. motion second by Mr. Stein any other discussion is your motion to approve it as is or approve it with six foot? I would approve it with six foot. Um, and I'm not so sure that we shouldn't put some trees in that boulevard at this point since we have that option to, it doesn't look like there's too many in that whole neighborhood. Okay. And at this point we could require that they go in. Okay. Would you can, we still second it? All right. Any other discussion? My discussion is more from a conceptual level that um, I think we've got neighborhoods um, existing in the city where we have 50-foot lot widths that are zoned R1, we have 75, we have 85 lot widths, all zoned R1 from the use perspective. I can have a single-family house in every one of those, um, on any one of those sides of the lots, but we have the same nine-foot requirement in the R1 zone for every side yard. Um, my recommendation moving forward was that I'd like to see staff go out and look and research the idea of if I've got a R1 zone where the large, all those lots to the west are all 50 foot wide. Can so I, I Todd, we, Todd, no, even in the R1, if it's a 60 foot lot, 50 foot lot, it goes down to six feet. The oh, nine is not a constant, that's, that's not the, the nine foot is not a constant for the zoning so district. It's only for the lot size. Oh, for all residentials. All right. residentials. Oh, so okay. if it's R1 and he's got a 50 foot okay. lot, it's six oh, foot side okay. yard. Thank you for the, thank I think you. that's what you always say. Any other comments? 
All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. No. Roll call. Ford? No. Johnson? Yes. Hansen? No. Stonebarger? Yes. Stein? Yes. Case? No. Motion pa uh, does not pass. Again, my 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 recommendation is I think we need to look at something different than even a six foot side yard on a fifty foot lot. Regardless of the R two, the R one, the R three district, um, a five foot side yard if they're both at five feet is sufficient space for fire protection purposes. Um, yeah, but then the hang overhangs start going out into there, and then they got to fire protect the overhang. So this six but foot it, pretty much takes care of yeah, that, but having to do, do the, the optional construction. Do, yeah, I understand, but if they do the fire protect on the overhang and the and the side walls, it would still it would suffice. Um, we have plenty of lots in in the community that I can tell just by looking at that neighborhood that there are there are structures closer than five feet. Um, that were existing and and I agree with the, the premise of moving forward that you have adequate side yards on newly developed properties and, s and newly developed subdivisions existing subdivisions um, that predate the requirements of of the of the ordinances makes it difficult for individuals to reinvest in their property which adds tax base which is still a good thing for the city okay item number three Application was submitted requesting to enlarge an existing non-conforming cold storage building, which is located in the C3 Highway Commercial District, increasing the cubic contents by raising the side wall height from 9 feet to 12 feet on the front 2,160 square foot portion of the non-conforming structure. Application was denied based on the following ordinance regulations. 21.0302 prohibits the creation, alteration, and or enlargement of non-conforming structures so as to conflict or further conflict with ordinance regulations. 21.1003 height and placement regulations. 21.601 all required yard setback shall be open unoccupi unoccupied space extending from the na natural ground level to the sky with no obstructions. And 21.6002 no adjacent open space shall be used to satisfy any yard setback required for any other structure and no yard setback shall be reduced in dimension below the minimum requirements set forth in the district in which set, said yard or lot is located. Staff finds that currently there exists a legal, non-compliant 3,168 square foot cold storage column building on this substandard 6,363 square foot C3 zone parcel. The original structure and the subsequent addition were permitted for construction on a much larger 15,150 square foot parcel. The parcel was subdivided into two less conforming parcels in 1985. If application is endorsed, this board may consider requiring fulfill fulfillment of any and all lock, uh, lacking boulevard infrastructure requirements in conjunction with any structural improvements authorized by building permit. I do have a uh, copy of the original permits if you're interested in seeing how that happened. This is the site plan for what is proposed. Um, we do have um, a, a, a measurement for the closest point on this side is approximately uh, instead of eight and a half it does get as close as six basically six and a half feet or so right right here. And then this is the permit for the original building uh, where it was on a 15,000 square foot lot. Um, it was a 151 and a half by 100 foot lot that it was permitted on. So and Jill, yes? just a question on that last one. So it was supposed to be 20 foot back and it was supposed to be 15 foot side yard at that time? It appears to say 15 foot here. I've looked at this several times, but I almost, almost think it might say five because this says 12. I'm not sure. And that was improved at the time when it was a compliant 
100 by 150 lot. That was a more compliant lot, that's correct. It might have even been um, the minimum size lot at that time. This was back in uh, 79. It was also C2 at that time, not C3. So. Right, C2. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in our ordinances preventing someone from selling off a compliant lot to make a non-compliant lot? Well, actually, our ordinance says, no, you can't do that. There is no, no legal mechanism. Uh, we can't legally stop them. We the only thing they do is they lose right. their buildable rights, but we cannot say, right. no, you can't not there's, sell your there's property. There's no legal me mechanism to, to do that at this time. That's Our right. ordinance prefers that you don't make it non-conforming, but we can't legally stop you from doing right. it. You yeah. just lose buildable right and certain privileges that you have on the lot when it's com conforming. And when before that property is sold, is that something that comes up in a title search? It should. But well, it should, always. but did it? It doesn't always. Okay. I'm just... Then in 1980... 82 the the addition was put on the back um, and this shows that it was still a 100 by 151 and a half foot lot um, not sure when it got subdivided off what is the property to the north also zone c3 Currently, no, it switches right there. It goes back to R28 to the north. Is there any requirements on screening between commercial and residential uses? Only if it's outside storage. Only outside storage. Thank For you. Parking. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, I'll open the public hearing if there's anybody here to speak for and against. Uh, did any of the adjacent property owners respond? I'm Doug Mogg, the owner of the property, and um, I guess, yeah, I agree it is not compliance with the setbacks, the parking. I know that. That's all I'm aware of that. Um, when I purchased the building, it's exactly the way it was when I purchased it. Okay. When, when did you purchase it? Hmm, good question. I'd say Roughly. probably 2004. So did you know that it was substandard at that time? No, and no, I did not. I'm not changing the footprint of the building at all. I'm not encroaching the side yard anymore, encroaching the setback. I just want to raise the building so I can all make right. a usable building of it. So you're not changing the footprint, you just want to increase the height, the height of the first building by two feet? Three feet, I believe it is, from nine to 12 feet. Right, right now, I got nine 12? foot sidewalls with an eight foot door. And you can't. Well, needless to say, you can't back a pontoon, an ice shack, or nothing in there. So I just need a big, bigger door up front to make it usable. Were you planning on raising the sidewalls for the entire building, or just? Uh, just um, if you can go back, I call it the front portion. Um, Yeah, the front portion, the back part that was added on, I believe you said in 82, would not, it'd be left alone. Just the front portion to get a bigger door up front. The, what is that? I can't read the numbers. Um, is it 62 or the front portion? The front portion is 3,160, or excuse me, the building is 3,160 eight square feet, but the front portion is 2,160 square feet. It's 30 by 72. 30 by 72, the front portion is what I'm asking for. Doug, have you talked to the neighbors to the north and the, and the residents asking what their opinions yeah. were? Yeah, I talked to, um, Chris Stein owns the building to the north, and he said he had no issues with it. Uh, actually, the neighbor to the north east, um, He's, his property is more on the addition part than the, the part I'm talking about. He didn't, he said, whatever you want to do, do. Um, the people to the back, which the, that back portion is not being touched, um, had no compliance. And the other one that is probably the closest neighbor 
um, is Marv, and I believe he's here today. Um, I think it'd be 160. Ain't he the closest building to me? I think 160 is what Marv is. Go back to that photo. Yeah, he has the 160. So by raising it three feet, it would allow you to utilize a storage that you cannot that have. 11 and a half foot door actually, but then I'd have a, use it for cold storage. And it'd be a personal cold storage. It is not a commercial. It's just for my own pontoon, ice shack, that stuff. The building next to it at 160, I believe the sidewalls on that building are 12 foot right now. Okay. It, they'd be the same height then. What did you plan on storing in this building when you bought it? When I bought it, I um, a bobcat. Um, I actually pushed snow in the wintertime and I'd put the bobcat in there, a car trailer, um, lower stuff. And I actually built a shop across <laughs> town now for that stuff. And now it's just my personal building that I either need to sell off and if I sell it off, um, I'm not sure what can all be used for. I asked Ken, I stopped up here Monday and asked if I do sell it, what can it all be used for? And the parking issue in my eyes, um, it's probably the best use for the building as a cold storage, personal cold storage that you pull something out Friday night and put it back Sunday night. I bought it, like I said, in 04. So at that time I never had nothing over six feet, eight feet high. Any other questions for Mr. Mogg? Anybody else who wants to speak for or against the? Not, we'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion for discussion purposes. Mr. Stein moves, or is there a second? Second. Mr. Ford seconds it. Uh, discussion. I, I will, I'd like just to throw something out. Earlier we had Earlier this year, or maybe it was even last year, we had a lot of discussion about uh, RVs, boats, all this, trying to get them off the street because people didn't like them sitting out. And right now we do have a nine foot sidewall height garage limitation. Some of the other towns around us, I, uh, Fort Pier I know for a fact, just raised theirs about six months ago to 14 foot. I think we should eventually at some point in time I think this committee should study whether we want to raise the sidewall heights of garages um, to afford more storage for some of these types of structures. Any other comments? What's the separation distance between um, Doug's building and the building to the south? Oh, the other, the other, the, the um, not oh, that. Approximately six feet. And the building to the south has 12 foot sidewalls? I believe. If you can, you put my screen up. I have Google, and I can look. You can look and see exactly how they look to next to each other. Okay. I'm guessing all the rain from that lands on your roof, darn near. From the neighbor's roof. Yeah, close.
Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item, number four. Application was submitted requesting to construct a non-conforming 900 square foot 30 by 30 detached garage on a substandard R1 zone parcel. Said structure proposed to be constructed two feet from the rear northerly property line where a minimum nine feet is required, five feet from the side westerly property line where a minimum six feet is required and occupying 35.45% of the requir required rear yard where a maximum 30% is allowed. Application was denied based on the following ordinance regulations. Section 210302 prohibits the design and creation of nonconforming structures. 211001 and 211002 height and placement regulations or setbacks. 216001 all required yard setbacks shall be open on occupied space extending from the natural ground level to the sky with no obstructions and 216002 no adjacent open space shall be used to satisfy any yard setback required for any other structure and no yard setback shall be reduced in dimension below the minimum requirements set forth in the district in which such yard or lot is located. Staff finds that currently there exists a non-compliant 2,208 square foot house and one non-compliant 440 square foot detached garage providing one to two enclosed parking spaces on this substandard R1 zoned corner, oh that is not a corner parcel, sorry, R1 zoned parcel. There's more open space available for outside parking. There appears to be sufficient buildable area to construct a more moderate garage, either attached or detached, completely compliant or more compliant with ordinance regulations. The two most outstanding um, non-compliance issues are in contrast with sections 21-20023A of the ordinance, which states, a garage permitted after July 11, 2008, which is entered perpendicular to an alley shall not be located closer than 20 feet to the alley line at the lake, the road is the alley. Um, a garage which is entered parallel to an alley shall not be located closer than nine feet to the alley line. And as I said, rear yards for homes located on the lakefront property shall be treated the same as an alley. Then section 21-2003D2 um, is limitations on accessory structures. Accessory structures may be located in the required rear yard, but may not occupy more than 30% of the required rear yard. And as I stated previously, this occupies approximately, or the proposed would occupy approximately 35.45%. If application is endorsed, this board may consider requiring fulfillment of any and all lacking boulevard infrastructure requirements in conjunction with any structural improvements authorized by building permit. And for this garage, the way the uh, driveway goes it would be parallel so that the minimum would be nine feet is that correct correct um, the, it would be as close as two feet to the property line and this is a, this is an it, odd situation with it isn't exactly parallel and it isn't exactly per perpendicular it's <laughs> it's an s curve in okay well we could we could make an exception perhaps and call it nine feet it's a 66 foot wide lot, so the side yard would be 6.6 6 .6 on the street side, but it's only 50 foot on the uh, lake side. So if we average the two, we could say it's a six foot side yard requirement. Yes. Okay. Uh, repeat that. He's averaging, actually the width of a lot is the mean average of the lot perpendicular to the mean average of the length. It's only 50 foot on the lake side and 66 on the road side. So what's the requirement then for the side yard? Well, it'd be a 58 foot lot and it'd be six feet the minimum, the smallest. And he's looking at a five. Right. He's looking at, yes, five here two and two rear. Mm -hmm. So if it was six foot from the lot line, if it was nine foot from the road, it would be 
compliant except for the 30 percent rear yard correct um, uh, and well also if you push him off to those dimensions it would be compliant to the 30 percent also as long as it oh, stayed oh. 10 feet away from the house or more once it becomes less than 10 it Except for he doesn't have an attached garage, so it can be closer than 10 feet. And then right, he's classified as attached, not detached. And then it goes it to 25. Setback. <laughs> so if it's less than 10 foot from the house, it's attached. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, that's math, too much math. <laughs> <laughs> so theoretically, if the garage dimensions were diminished slightly, it was tilted a little bit to be six feet and closer to that nine feet, no variance would be required. I don't know that you can get this garage in here without some sort of variance because like I said, as it gets closer to the house, then the setback goes to 25 okay. feet versus the other one. Okay. So, so there's gonna be something that has to be worked to allow it to happen. And the actual distance from the sidewall to the asphalt is 22 feet or Two feet. Two feet. Two feet. Yeah. Two. Well, that's asphalt. All the, way, the dark lines, all the way asphalt, right there. The ra the lot this, line. This is that property th line. But where's the asphalt the line to start? Mm -hmm. Oh, there. Yeah. And the right of way for the road is a narrow right of way. Is that correct? Yeah, I measured it. I measured it was only 40 feet. 40 feet. So it's only 40 foot wide right of way to begin with. What's the speed limit there? 25. 25. No, the But by moving Farm, the building, um, it, yeah. presently part of that building is actually built into the right of way. Right, yes. The existing building is partially in the right of way. I did interpolate off of this that, and, and I'm not saying it's possible even, but if the garage were attached and slightly smaller, like a 24 by 24, it could fit without variance. It just seems, I mean, 30 by 30, that's a, well, it's almost as big as the house, frankly. So with that, I'll open the public hearing. If anybody is here to speak for or against the uh, variance, please come up and state your name. My name is Jared Friedman. I'm the owner of the property. So what, I, what I've... Uh, plan to use this for is for cold storage for storage of my boat and vehicle so that it's not on the street what I've tried to do is set it up so that it works functionally for myself but also keeping the thought process that goes along with the neighbors as well so that's why I've set that one corner at five feet from the adjacent property line and then rotated it a little bit so that I can get as get nearly as far off the property line as possible so it's just that one corner that'll be exactly at five feet you can see where the existing structure is, which I believe was actually the previous house. Um, and then the house was added in the 1960s. So I'll have that driveway that goes there as well that will provide me off sites, or uh, off street parking, and that sort of thing. I do have a letter from um, both adjacent neighbors um, that they've signed that they are okay with the uh, proposed um, thing that I've, I'm asking you guys for. Okay, you understand you're asking for a lot of variances here, and we've discussed some of our issues. You know, you could tilt it a little bit. You could move it a little bit. If you get too close to the house, then there's a bigger setback. Mm -hmm. uh, could you live with a smaller building? So that, you know, if you could get six foot off the lot line, that'd be great. If you could move it so it's nine foot off the road, that'd be outstanding because that's a very narrow right of way, mm -hmm. and it's tough to... Uh, so we have issues with, you know, like it's existing in the right of way already. Mm -hmm. So I will. I, w I guess I would have to consider it whether I would do it. Uh, you know, a significantly smaller structure, just based on what uh, what I'd like to get into the into the building. Uh, Twenty four uh, deep um, garage doesn't. Uh, um, get me uh, my current boat measures could it's a 20-foot boat but with the motor and the trailer tongue uh -huh. and everything that gets me to 25 feet already so could, could you do a 24 by 28 24 wide 28 deep um i guess i, I could yeah i certainly uh could look at that uh, and I mean, move it closer to the house so we have nine foot on the roadside because uh, currently what do i have up on the roadside two 
Oh, two feet. And you want that moved to what? The seven foot farther in, so you have nine foot to the road. Okay, so I guess if I de so I'd be essentially moving in three feet if you'd be, you. You'd be de you know you got your thirty feet. If yep. you go if you go to the 24, 24 you're going to pick up six, and then with the angle you should get close to nine feet going back the other way. Right from that yeah, from that point there. And then, and then if you just tilt it just a little bit, you could make a six foot and a nine foot. I think would go on a yeah on a twenty four by twenty eight. And, and you wouldn't be much. You'd be, be maybe eight foot from your deck at at the minimum. What would what would the variance be at that point then if you did it? Would would, be just off would, the would we meet the thirty five or thirty percent rear yard? Yes. Yes. And the, var the variance would be from the road, because that has to be... No, no, nine foot would be adequate. Oh, okay. Well, then there wouldn't be any other core variance. Right. Correct? Um, if he changes it 24 by 28 and goes to nine foot like you talked about, he might be a little closer than 10 feet there, but I think, you know, the proposal at nine feet and, and having to give on that a little bit is well worth it versus the 25 foot, personally, but... As you've compromised. That's a, just a deck. It's not the actual structure of the house, all right? Yeah, but a deck is still treated like structure. Right. It's just but a little it, easier to remove. Right, <laughs> but it doesn't have a roof line over it. No. Well, if I'm understanding what your proposal, Mr. Chairman, is then if, if you did the nine-foot setback, reduce the size of the garage 24 to 28, then there's no variance to vote on then because there's... But there is um, what it would be uh, is the the ten foot uh, plus minimum between the house and garage, but that's much more desirable than um, a setback to the property line. So the motion would be to approve uh, a two foot variance no. from the proposed garage no. to the house. No, basically. Basically, yes. As oh, long as the, the twenty, yeah. The and he could comply with maybe even making parallel um, a six foot here, nine foot here, which would only create a variance between the house and garage. Jared, is that something you could live with? Um, you're, you're going from a thirty by thirty from a twenty four by twenty eight, so you are it's, it's a, it's slightly smaller, you, but you're losing some space. But at least you could get a garage. Yeah. So just so I understand, I'm going to shrink the garage by six feet width-wise, so that will get me eight feet off the line, and then I get, need to move it in one foot. One foot, right. So I'd have to be three feet off the property line, is what you're saying. No. no. Three plus eight, three plus the six, you're going to be nine feet off the property line. It would be a minimum nine foot here. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. and a minimum six foot here. So however that positions the garage, you would be not closer to the property line than nine foot here and six foot here. And then the only variance you would need then is just the variance between the deck and the garage. And that would still so be really close to being 10 yeah. feet. Yeah. Yeah. Should be really close, you might, you might not. Yeah, it might be nine foot instead of 10 foot, but that would. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable opportunity. So, uh, I mean, so if I move <coughs> in uh, my driveway is going to significantly you, change. You're going to have to make a little tighter turn. A lot tighter turn yeah. with how narrow the road is. And but if it's, you know, it's two foot shorter. Basically what you do is you can take six foot off of this side two foot off of this side. Mm -hmm. This will be 24 by 28. Mm -hmm. And then this will just have, and this very, very little, by the time you push this One over foot. a foot, this is going to swing this down a little bit anyway. So you're not going to be a, a whole lot worse off than what you are right now. Your dad would just go like that and like that a little bit. So this will be nine feet off the property line, mm -hmm. plus, plus whatever this is off the street then. Okay. You'll still have a... 12 to 13 feet to make that angle. Yeah. Okay. And being two foot shorter. You know, I'm not 
probably it. I would recommend that, and I guess if that's what the, you leave with the board and you decide you don't want to do it, then you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. You either got something on the table or nothing on the yep. table. So, so it's not, I mean, the 30 by 30 obviously does not work in the council's mind. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, well, let's, I guess we'll go with that proposed then. Okay. With that, can we get a motion to that effect? Any I make a motion to approve a variance which would result in a minimum six foot side yard to the what direction is that? Western. West mm -hmm. and a nine foot setback from Sunset Drive and allowing the proposed garage to be within two feet of the, uh, not two feet, within eight feet of the deck. wood deck and maximum dimensions of the garage is 28 by 24. Is that right? Very good. Is there, is there a second to that? I'll second. Mr. Stein seconds it. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. Have any old business? Uh, no old business. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Do you, do you have any? No, but you got to ask. Uh, well, okay. Is, is there any new business? Anybody have any? I want my motion to adjourn to be official. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make that. Uh, Mr. Stein makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Johnson seconds the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. I'd like to call to session the Watertown Plan Commission meeting of Thursday, August 24th, 2017. Roll call. Hanson. Here. Stoneberger. Here. Stein. Here. Case. Here. And Olson, Dolly, and Colhane are absent. Okay. Uh, we need uh, item number one. We need approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Case and a second. Second. Mr. Hansen, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number two, approval of the amendments of the August 10th, 2017 meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Stein makes motion, a second. Mr. Hansen? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number three, four, and five. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Keyes. I would just like to uh, begin uh, by saying that I'd like to make a motion to postpone action on items three, four, and five until we have uh, legal counsel present to discuss um, the, language. the language. Is there a second to motion? Second. Mr. Stein seconds it. 
Is there any discussion? Not that not that we couldn't have a discussion today, but I just yeah. think there are, there are some things we're making recommendations on potential legislation for the. Council there are some questions outstanding, and, that and I have I do have a couple questions on some of the language. Mm -hmm. With that, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, items number three, four, and five are tabled until next meeting. Okay. Item number six. Can we, uh, yes. Are we? Can we table them without having a public hearing? We've published that we're having a public hearing. We will suspend the public. I, if there's somebody here that wants to, okay. Some, I will hold my motion. If there's someone uh, want to discuss this in public? Anyone? Can we hold the public hearing next meeting? We have to republish it. Yes, we can. I, I just didn't want to okay. discard the you. public hearing Thank without All right. an opportunity. Because if we had somebody here to talk, we should listen. Okay. But postponing the action is a different discussion than the public hearing. So, and depending on where, the, we won't probably be able to have this public hearing the next council or the next planning commission meeting That's just fine. because of the 10 day notification we could still have a conversation with with legal counsel amongst the board prior to a, a public hearing yep okay actually i mean there's no burning timeline on this okay. we we can set it up for the next agenda whenever we have room to publish the public hearing and and I don't disagree with the legal counsel. If you have legal concerns, is definitely um, warranted. And but but let's back up just a little bit for honesty. The drafts that we have before us was prepared by our at that time current. And I had a conversation with the so, former yeah. city attorney, and, right. and he agreed with some of the comments that I'd had. And I'd rather than um, make a motion to move something forward, I'd like to have. The new city acting city attorney make sure that yeah. we're yep. all and I side. I concur with that too. So, but back to the timing of this, we can we'll just look at what it fits to republish the notice and get it on an agenda. It may not be the next agenda is our only caution. It may be uh, two two agendas from now. So. I think that would be fair for the Ontario Council. You betcha. And I there's no burning issues that are looming here that that. Uh, these impacts so it's just kind of language clarification and we wanted to get things a little cleaned up so we'll just put it back on the agenda when when it fits All right. thank you brandy number six old business um, this is an update on the replat of lot one prairie hills development edition what we are waiting on we did not put it on the next council meeting agenda because after the fact, we noticed that it was a double frontage lot, that it only had 75 foot of frontage and it needs 85 foot for, R1, R, for an R1 district. So um, what we're waiting on too is to figure out who is going to take responsibility for that right of way for the development agreement when it comes time for that to be constructed and that that wouldn't fall on the landowner to the east that would be purchasing that lot one that they were replatting. Okay. So we're just waiting on those things to get ironed out before it will go to council. Okay, so I'll give a quick recap of everything. So if you can put my screen on. The plat um, will still come forward with a 66 foot right away along the w western border of that lot. The remainder of the lot is being um, considered for purchase by the adjacent landowner and what will happen is likely he'll have a, a building that he may want to build on there and he'll do a, a development lot agreement so then then we bring this piece that's a remnant that wouldn't be conforming would then the whole lot would be considered um, a corner lot and then we're back in the conformance with corner lot and um, the other missing component here was we had had a previous commitment from an adjoining landowner um, to build a road up into through Prairie Hills and into Stony Point. And we didn't have a document that then addressed this portion of right-of-way 
as it's presently being presented, and we're, we've asked for that. So when we get that document, and we'll also run that by legal counsel, that we're uh, comfortable with that language, then we'll bring that plat to the city council. So it got a little muddy, more or less, because we, we wanted a commitment on who was going to build the road someday, the public. We didn't want the city taxpayers to necessarily be automatically uh, obligated. So uh, we've kind of slowed things down, make sure that we have all of our uh, proceedings uh, right, and I think we'll bring it to the council with with uh, a little bit uh, more open eyes and and a better plan so that's that's our update thank you do we have any new business no do we have any other old business <laughs> no do we have any executive session <laughs> no <laughs> come on John. do you have a motion to adjourn we do have a motion to adjourn. mr stein do we have a second second Mr. Hanson, all in favor say aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you.